Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me here. It's uh, March 21st, and I'm going to go to the next step with this uh, very nice Nord Mindy radio, and I think the next step is uh, to fool around with the alignment. Now, the challenge for me is I don't have alignment instructions. I, I found a, a schematic. I haven't looked at it closely. It looks like a very, very poor copy of the schematic anyway, and I don't think it's going to help me too much with this. So, you know, when I look at this uh, guy here, um, I can see it's just full of holes all through the board. There's just there's like a dozen or more holes. Those almost certainly go up into tuning items of sorts. Not necessarily, but so there's all those to ponder about. That's on the main board. Yeah, sure enough, if you look right inside the radio, see it's full of like IF cans and things like that. All of them are slug tuned, so there's a slug coming up from under. So this would be the IF tuning and things like that. Maybe uh, somewhere in here is the FM tuner, which I'm not so sure just yet where it is. And then we have that thing under the cardboard here. This is really what I think I'm going to focus on. Uh, this is all the band tuning. Why don't we take a closer look at all of this. I'm more comfortable with uh, messing around with this than, than the other, other parts. Um, and I need some really tiny tools to do it, too. Ooh. Whoa. are like slots. Let me get the close-up close up camera going here because there we go. Are they color coded? Some of them are purple. So they're all intimately wired up into the uh, band switch here is running right down underneath it. And you could kind of guess, you know, like one one set is the first RF, second RF, an oscillator, something like that. I think the two RF ones would look, oops, sorry, sorry so, some way similar. Wow, you can actually just see the transformer. I mean, there's the windings right there. The slug going up and down inside the windings. Huh. Now, usually these things are. Uh, well, I was going to say usually these are in cans, but that's not true. This this bank here, the two of them here, they're connected. See the blue wires running across. But this one's not. Seems isolated. So you know, wild guess. This is the oscillator. And notice in one, like there's one, there's five there, six here, and six here. There's five there, but the fifth one is that capacitor. It looks like a capacitor anyway. Now there's a chance that when you align this radio, you start with, let's say, the, uh, the AM band, and then the alignment takes place with a sort of, let's call it a master trimmer. You're trimming the master local oscillator. If I can put it that way, it's not the best way to put it. There's only one local oscillator in here. But but having made the first adjustment, all the rest ride on top of the first one. Now, I don't know how true that is, but remember when we were checking the bands out they all seem to be out a similar amount, which made me think there's some singular factor. And that, that would be that master thing. So we'd be looking for another uh, trimmer, trimmer, capacitor, certainly not that thing. Wow, this is one busy radio.
it, to me, it impresses me that, that they could make these things in numbers and actually succeed in, in making them work and get them out of the factory and, and into people's hands. It's so much stuff in here that could be done wrong. What they must do is they must build it, you know, a step at a time and have test benches and make sure when they're assembling the assemblies, the assemblies themselves are good. Well, I'm not seeing anything here that's jumping out at me. To tell me, oh, what, well, what's that one right there? 390. There's a, a hole back here to push the tool through. 390. 390. What is 390? 390 is probably just a number. Um, um, you know, so the question is, where where do you start? I'm just looking around now. Where where, where do you start? kinds of adjustments. Look at them all down in there. Oh boy. So there's adjustments on each one of these. Uh, looks like each one of the, the switches. So you see the switches provide an awful lot of terminals and not all those terminals are necessarily uh, used uh, as the switch. They can become just terminals to connect stuff to. You need terminals in a radio. Oh my gosh, look at that stuff. This is all like right out of reach, really. Um, man alive. Am I going to go in there and turn, twist all that stuff? No way. So, you know, another way of approaching this is just leave it all alone because it's working fairly well. The FM could stand a little bit of a tweak to get rid of like, just a little bit of distortion. If I could kind of figure that out. Oh, look at those guys. Well, these are probably the ones I'm talking about right in here. Some of this is going to be... Oh, look at them all. Oh my gosh. Absolutely everything is, is tuned. I don't dare go near any of this stuff without a manual and uh, even then now it's kind of freaky but you know it's one maybe maybe one band at a time of course all the band stuff's up here like for the short wave bands the other bands might be switching through these coils so it's really one set of them or a few of them at a time it's not the whole shebang let's look at the IF here as best we can and right up in the corner oh yeah there's another one so there's that. There's a single there. What's that orange mark on it? You can see the little pieces of uh, rubber strip sticking up beside the slug. These all appear to be. Oh, it's hard to tell. Are they waxed? I think they've been waxed, which means they've, they've poured some wax in to freeze them. Well, that doesn't look like that. looks pretty clean, that one there. Now, these don't look waxed at all. Now, is there any hint on the board? Is there anywhere where they say, Jim, this is the one? Just all the component value, numbers rather. Hmm. Um, so, in an FM tuner in the area where uh, the detection is occurring, there's usually some symmetry in the components. It may be a long shot. Can I spot? something that looks <laughs> symmetrical yeah I don't think so 
There's also an electrolytic capacitor that's critical, usually in the detector, in the FM detector. Good luck, spot map. Holy smokes. Let's go back. So where would the detector be? Yeah, right. Who knows? So there's a couple singles right there. And another single over there. Kind of hinting to me that that's the FM end of the FM, maybe maybe the detector right in here. Oh my gosh, there's a pulley. That's a string pulley right there, right on the board. There's a string going right right through the board here, right right across the top, disappearing out yonder. Huh. My gosh. like a capacitor there, is that tantalum, I thought that is. Well, everything looks to be in great condition. I mean, I think that's, there's a reason why this radio works as well as it does, even without doing anything. So what can I possibly do here that's going to help this guy out? Um, let's go back to the idea of uh, doing all these. Um, So what if there is a master, a, a, a base uh, trimmer, and I'm not going to adjust it, then I would be adjusting all the local oscillators for every band, roughly the same amount to accommodate the error in the so-called master trimmer. The master trimmer would be, normally it's right on the capacitor, but look, look, at, look at this, this is not your, your typical capacitor here at all. Uh, it would be it would be easy to get to. It would be gettable. It would have to be gettable. So so there's no that's a part of the. Uh, sorry if I'm mumbling here. Nothing nothing way down there. So I so I'm not s seeing anything. Man, there's something something way down there. That's actually on the other board, and uh, maybe has more to do with the uh, switch push buttons than that. There's the 390. Hmm. You know, we can't you can't look at these things too much because it's so e so much stuff to see here. What, what, what's that thing? There's a coil right there. And I know you might, uh, and, and it looks like you can get at it with a slug. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can wander around on this radio for quite a while going, oh my gosh. I don't know how you'd even get a tool into that to try to adjust it if it even is adjustable. Maybe a more thorough search for the. Uh, I'm way up in here uh, for the uh, the man the uh, some instructions, please some instructions. Ay 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 ay. Okay, wow. Okay, that's enough of that, I think, for now. Yeah, yeah I think I've seen enough of that. Well, one of the things we can do here is we can, we can always turn on the radio, and by interfering with these coils, we can figure out which ones are oscillators and that. We could do that. And then know which one's the oscillator and, and move it. But what, what if, what if that's a mistake? What if all this stuff is kind of aligned properly and I move the oscillator, I'll move it out of alignment with the other coils just to get the pointer more accurate. The pointers weren't, the pointer wasn't that terribly inaccurate. The band wasn't shifted off so far that 
you know, the, the band's missing at one end on the dial because it's so far off. It's not like that. It's just a little bit off. I'm not going to use this radio for precision. It's it's FM really that I should be thinking more about. It's really it really is. Um, maybe what I could do is uh, play this on FM, and I'll try to give it a strong antenna signal. See see if maybe the little bit of distortion I could hear is just because it wasn't getting all the signal that it might want. Speaker still connected. Okay, we'll put a little power on. At Amica, we think you should also look for the seniors. Now this is FM, I'm pretty sure. Have so much wisdom and experience no FM antenna whatsoever. They can help these days perspective. So look for the seniors in your life. Give them a reassuring call. And don't be surprised if they end up reassuring you. No. A this message is a from Emma. Listening test, we starts. listen very careful. Top nine, top nine, bad nine, bad nine. 93 one. Number three. Fortunately, we cannot listen to music because it will be copyrighted. So my thinking on this is pay attention to the meter here and uh, let me just change the lighting a bit so I pay attention to the meter and listen to it and I think the idea that I think if our radio is working properly the meter will be at the top signal strength at the time the signal is the clearest okay we've got to find a non-music station here around the three four degree there mark today with the chance of flurries this afternoon and this evening well throughout Nova scotia and really across the country we're seeing an emotional coming together to grieve to honor and also to remember uh, the victims of the weekend's mass attack we know now that at least 20 people were killed the stories um, are coming from families and friends to our colleagues here at CBC News. More on that on our website at cbcnews.ca. The attacks started in port of pic and the investigation continues there today. Meanwhile, provincial officials say COVID-19 seems to have peaked in the general population, but infection continues to climb among the most vulnerable in long term. Yeah, it's a very, very sad, sad time here in Canada. Not only is the uh, worldwide COVID thing happening, but... We just had our largest uh, mass murder uh, ever on the east coast of Canada. God knows why some, somebody does something like that. It's just it's just horrifying. And, uh, it's one of the reasons I'm having a hard time in here today uh, working. Because uh, just all this stuff. And I'm ignoring you, cat, right now. So, wow. I was kind of hoping I wouldn't cross that into that zone while I'm in here working. But, okay. Evening, minus yeah, five. and then it's snowing. Yeah, just to add to it. Hi, I'm Matt Galloway. You're listening to now, the current. Listen to Matt Galloway's voice and watch the meter news, here. And some bad news this week. The community spread of COVID-19 seems to have peaked, suggesting physical distancing. So I mean, clearly, at, at the peak, his voice is distorted. Are still going up, specifically in long-term care homes, and collectively, the best sound is here. So that, that tells me this thing needs a little bit of a language adjustment. I gotta go deal with my cat, my cat here. I gotta, I gotta go. I gotta go. I'm just so upset. Oh man. So. Okay, I'll, I'll get a cheer on and come back. Okay, well, I spent some time searching for uh, uh, more information about this radio. I really couldn't find anything useful at all. So it's a well-known radio. There's quite a few versions versions of this. This is the Globetrotter 3. There's a 2. There's probably a Globetrotter. There's a Pro. There's an amateur version of it. Lots of versions of this radio. So uh, I'm kind of on my own still. Uh, still focused on the idea that the FM part of things should be dealt with. Now, we have a tuning capacitor here. There's another one on the other side of the radio here. Right there one here. One of those has to move 
to tune FM. Well, that's, and neither of them look like FM. This is the FM tuning control here. So that capacitor is not moving. one here. No. Wait a second here. Okay, you know what I saw? What you didn't see? Because I got a different angle. I saw a string moving. I saw a string moving up in here. Oh ho 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 ho. That wheel tuning, aha! So the, the 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 tuning knob is over here where my hand is. But the tuner is way over here. Where? Where over here? Ah, there it is. Of course, that little box. And there's adjustments going through the holes. Oh, Jimbo! That's not what we're trying to do. Ah, okay. Well, hopefully that didn't do anything. Uh, tiny adjustments all in there. <laughs> this is likely to be the RF part of the radio. So it's operating up at 100 megahertz inside this can. And then out of here, probably the conversion takes place in here, and then out of it, maybe on this blue cable here, comes the, the output, the uh, converted output at 10, at 10 megacycles. So guessing the blue wire is the wire, it's just a wild guess here. It comes along, disappears down in there, goes on to this button here. This button is called the FM button. So the blue wire goes to the FM push button. Now, um, you can kind of imagine coming out of the push button then is the FM signal heading towards the FM IF amplifier circuits. I see, I see a single slug transformer there, I see another one there. Double, 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 and double. Single, 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 oh my gosh, there's so many of them. So a lot of radios you'll find these, these double double IF cans. They have both the coils for the AM side and the FM side in the same in the same can. Um, but that's probably what we're seeing here, 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 and here. And then you can figure out that there's usually one single slug can right near the end of the IF system, and that single slug can is the FM uh, FM adjustment for the uh, uh, discriminator and sometimes all it takes is a little bit of touching up of that to get rid of this this problem I've got where when the radio is tuned to maximum signal it's distorted and when it's not distorted it's weak it's weaker that's really what I'm after oh my gosh so how am I going to figure out which of these are which uh, other than twiddling them, which is not a good idea at all. I have too many to choose from. So, how can I recognize the output end of this board? It's not even structured like most boards. You, you'll find these, these cans arranged in a line down the board. Very uh, symmetrically, not in this radio. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere here without risking messing up a, a relatively good working radio, turning it into a, a bad working radio. So this one can is got a red mark on it. Maybe that's the one. <laughs> Maybe the red mark indicates it. Can I even twiddle these? Well, I can do by a little bit of elimination. It's not going to be these double cans. None of that. It's going to be a single can. It probably is going to be at the end of the IF string. Where the heck is that? We can guess any direction through these. Um, you would expect to find 
a, a clumping of these tuning things at the end of the IF. So, so maybe we can assume this is the end of the IF in here, even though we've got some cans on one side and some on the other. This this looks very different from these. The, these three look the same. This one's got like a can in a can. Something different about this one. It still has the two slugs. But the IF is going to end near the detector. How in the heck am I ever going to recognize where a detector is in here? Because it, it would have the word on a detector here. But I'm afraid it's not going to do that for me. Oh boy. I can't seem to guess my way through this. Uh, I'm really left with twiddling, maybe starting with that one. And the red, the red mark on it may, may be uh, freezy paint. I may have painted it so people like me can't do what I'm about to do. So everyone's going to scream at me. I've got a metal screwdriver. Which I think it's small enough to get into the slot on that. Let's just see. Can it be moved? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it moves as easy as can be. There's nothing frozen about that. Okay, let me put it back. Where was it? I think it was there. <laughs> well, okay, we can kind of take a try at this and see what happens. Um, because if, if I'm lucky and I hit the right one, and it is just like I think it is, a little bit of twiddling is going to go a long ways to fixing up the sound. On FM. Now let's, let's think about. I could I could use an FM. Um, I use an FM station playing music, or I can I have an FM signal generator that I can use over here. This guy should produce a nice tone stereo. But this doesn't stereo, so it doesn't really matter. I can produce a nice tone with that. I think it might be better to start with this. A nice single tone to work with instead of a radio station, voices, and I can't use music, even though that's a really important thing to do. I'll do that in the end, but I can't use music because of copyright issues on YouTube. Okay, that's what I'm going to do that. I'm going I'm to get this guy going, I'm going to get this radio tuning that thing in, and we're going to fiddle with a couple of these controls a little wee bit. Uh, we'll watch the signal strength indicator. I think that's probably a very valid uh, thing to look at. Okay, that's my plan. That's the plan. Okay, here we go. Now I've got my stereo FM signal simulator going. The output from it is here. The antenna connection on the radio is... Uh, here. Just going to hook up the uh, red lead, not the other lead. Okay, hear it. Right on the money. A little more volume. We'll turn this guy down. Uh, carrier level. Here. So the carrier is now as, as low as it can be with that transmitter. This transmitter operates at around 100 megacycles, just a little bit back and forth. So you can see the pointers kind of in the middle of the band. Now, we need to watch the meter, listen to the sound, and decide if we can detect the idea that the signal strength is peaking when, when, when the sound is clear, the signal strength is not peaking. That's kind of what I want to say. Oops, what happened there? I guess I bumped the tuning. Okay, I turned up a little bit. Now, there's another effect with FM radios where as, as you tune across the signal, you'll hear it weak, then you hear it proper, then you hear it weak again. It's kind of like a three bump 
deal. Let's see if we can see that. I'll just tune across. Whoops, start again. Tune across. So you can see the second, the after bump, but not the. Well, let me go back the other way and I'll watch. There we go. Kind of first bump. And we're into the main tuning. Wow. Second bump right there. On the way out. So one of the challenges of listening to a signal like this is, is, is knowing it's distorted for sure. Whoa! What's going on there? That's kind of odd. Let's put this on uh, 400. Try it, try it there. Tune through. Second peak, top of the meter, right there. Hmm, doesn't seem that bad here, does it? Now, I can put an external, I can put an external audio signal into this. I've never done this before, and put some kind of like a music sound through there. Why not just tune in a radio station, like a regular radio station, and really listen to it? Uh, why, why not? It's, it's a good thing to do. Let's do that. Uh, just temporary antenna here. Okay, so we'll take off the signal generator. Right, maybe I'm chasing nothing again here. Hang the antenna up. I'm just going to switch this right off, get it out of the picture. I don't think there's any, when I do it with music, it's clear to me that when this is peaking, the music is, is distorted. Couldn't hear that with the uh, pure tone. Yeah, see, I'm at the peak now and listen to it. If I come back. Okay, so. Speaker just came on. Uh, 190 a week. 190 a week. Yeah, that's right. Um, you were living in the city of Toronto. What would 190 dollars a week have done? Yeah, um, so that would have covered my rent and then maybe food for a week. That's pretty much it. Not a whole lot. That's good. Upside down. No, no, definitely nothing much lower. Um, you don't qualify for the CEO. So in Canada, the government uh, program that people are relying on now to, like, for unemployment and uh, other financial stress situations, is called the CERB, Canadian Emergency Response. <laughs> I don't know what it means. So, but that's what everyone—that's the uh, government uh, financial vehicle or payment vehicle that's being used in Canada. Okay, tune, tune this guy in. In this position, we can't see the meter. We can't do it like this. I'm gonna want to fiddle with those. Oh, you know what? I'll put another. I'll put a camera on the meter. Yeah. 
gloves and, and there's no nest tree to okay let's to try to tuning the radio here an office or something like that is there some space for you to come back into the house now the meter's upside down so bear in mind that that's low on the on the right situation that I am and, and that's kind of stressing me out more than anything thinking about other people are supposed to do if they don't have somebody to go. Would you say in Toronto if you were able to receive the uh, emergency response Yeah, I would have seen there. That's the spot. It needs to be done now, to we're gonna make fiddle. sure that this is all based on what it sounds like. And the government has kind of shoveled a lot of money at the door already, but there are people okay. who have fallen Let's try and like this yourself. one. What is it that needs to be done to make sure that that financial support is more accessible right now? Um, I think, like, removing the bureaucracy is a huge, huge thing. Um, there's so many barriers in place, like um, English teaching. Um, I think if they made the application and the eligibility criteria much more clear, it would help many people. And even Can you hear any difference whatsoever? People who are currently on EI. That's not very reassuring at all. Okay, there's another couple already in here. They're too small for my screwdriver, though. Well, huh. let's try that again. I'm trying to return it right back to where it was. In the meantime, as you say, you're living back home, 27 years old. Do you have a, a sense as to how long you can stay there or how long you will stay there? So I'm, I'm messing up something else on the radio doing this. This, this is the unfortunate deal there. Son of a gun. Let's try that. Oh my gosh, Beamsville. So, Beamsville, Ontario, that's the town I grew up in and went to high school in. That's, that's my hometown, Beamsville, about 3,500 people, maybe 5,000 now, 1,600 when I was a little kid. Wow. So I, got, so I can hear the distortion, clearly. Let's find something that will affect the distortion that I can fit my screwdriver <laughs> into. Where, where, where is that? Not, you know what? I can't fit it into any of these. They're all tiny, tiny, tiny. See, I'm looking to see if there are slots or what they are in there. There probably are slots, but my screwdriver. That's, that's just got to be way too big. Oh my gosh. Wouldn't that be easy to, uh, to adjust those either? Uh, because whatever you get into them is going to cam out if there's any any back pull at all. What have I got here that's that small? That bad little guy. It's got, it's got that, that rubber piece that's right in the way. turning that I just want to see if I can make my tool fit. Actually, it won't even fit into that. Um. 
I don't think I have anything smaller than that. Something really, really tiny. Um, so that's for a slug. So is that. I can't even adjust them. This one I fiddled with to make it, this is really, really small. Fiddled with this for another radio years ago. weak and flimsy. Now it's like trying to adjust it with a piece of uh, limp spaghetti here. I mean, this has just got huge amounts of twist in it. I really do like to use uh, stiff metal with stuff like this. I've got a teeny, teeny, teeny screwdriver. Right idea. It's still too wide, though. The blade is still just too wide. Wow. <laughs> Any smaller, it's no longer a blade. Um, how about a watch? A watch tool. Um, I don't think this is any smaller. A touch bigger, but I have some smaller ones. I do have some smaller ones. Where would they be? Oh my gosh. Okay, I gotta go hunt hunt those down. Okay, let's give this a little go. I had to really dig these guys out. Pretty sure that's smaller. Oh yeah, that's that's much, much smaller. Okay. That's in. Now, oh, watch. Listen, listen and watch. I didn't hear any change. Oh. Watch out, man. You tuned it too far. Again, I can just be messing up other parts of the radio. Something terrible here. take much to make an impact. Ah! Wow, I don't know, should I continue guessing this, playing this guessing game? supposed to be this I'm, I'm looking at the detector on the output of the IF not back on the tuner up here and lots of more stuff to twiddle around in there uh, all of it guesswork and uh, oh, there's, yeah really just as a matter of odds there are so many things in there to adjust and I'm guessing more or less trying to do it smart Let me just tune the radio now without looking up anything, just listening to it. Um, and as you know, as we said, sometimes it feels like our efforts are at a disadvantage. What is it that's keeping you going? Running a, a small business is stressful at the That's where I would want to listen to it for sound. Oh, look at the signal. I'm looking up at the meter now. And you feel like you're He's 
give up on this? I hate, I hate that idea. Uh, you know what? I'll stop. I'll stop and think. Maybe there's something I can think up here that make this a little more effective. Without, without so much risk of messing up the radio. Okay, I've reached the point now where I'm thinking maybe I can fiddle with the FMIF transformers and somehow get somewhere. So this is AM, this is FM on this side. I figured that out already. Okay, I'm watching the meter and listening. This is a dangerous game I'm playing. I, I can't imagine this will clarify it. I don't think these are way out of whack. What about this unusual one back here? It's just altering the strength of the output. I'm going to go over these ones again. Uh, now this one I've discovered is, is not FM. These ones? Okay, watching the meter. Nothing. Okay, so it's not FM. This one. So I'm, again, I'm just messing everything up here. Hope I'm not. Well, I don't think I can fix it. It's really a drag. Um, really, really a drag. Uh, can some of these be accessible from underneath? Oh, there's so many other adjustments in there. I'm not getting anywhere here. Let's, let's tune for sound. Right at the top of the tuning, it just becomes distorted. And they are posts by brand new novice who have come to the project for the first time. They have a little bit of free time. So down this side where it's distorted. I just can't leave well enough alone. The FM button is here. This, this one has a green thing on it. Why, why would that be a green marker? It's the one you should never touch, that's why. A wild sourdough project. Yeah, that's Canadian. This is Canadian national radio. Wild turkeys in Montreal, deer in Winnipeg. We'll talk about how this pandemic has changed our connection to wildlife. I'm Matt Galloway. This is the current stimulus. Yeah, news time. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here. This is CBC Radio One. Stop and think. Go away and think some more.